Maya Angelou reminds us that those who know their history are liberated from it. And so it's with that in mind and great excitement in my heart that I'm actually speaking to you today from the garage that I was burned in when I was a child. Nine years old, I'd seen some other kids playing with fire and gasoline that weekend. I tried to do the exact same thing in this room. I walked over to a can of gasoline, bent down next to it, tried to pour a little bit on top. And before the liquid even came out of the gasoline, the vapor came out, created a massive explosion that literally blasted me against the far side of the garage. When we were little, we were all taught and trained what to do when we're on fire. What are you supposed to do? But when you're actually on fire, my friends, what do you end up doing? Right on. I got scared. The memory just went out the door, so I started running. I ran on fire, flames leaping all around me in this room, back toward my parents' house. I ran through this doorway, back toward my parents' house, flames leaping three feet off of my body in all directions. I was scared. I was in pain. I was sad. I was terrified. And I needed somebody. So I run into this room. There's my parents' bedroom, but they're not home. I run into the kitchen. Nobody's in the kitchen. No one's in the breakfast room. Flames are leaping off of my body. I just kept running. I ran through this room, screaming for help, hoping for a hero, praying for anybody, through the little half bathroom, past the family room. And I come racing all the way into the front of the house. When I get here, I end up standing on top of a rug that used to be right here. I stood right at this spot underneath this light, screaming and praying and hoping for a hero. I'll take anybody, I'll take anybody. And the first person I saw were two little girls running down the steps. It's my sister Amy and it's my sister Susan. When I see their faces, what I see back, the reflection is horror. All they could do was scream and shout and cry along with me. So I just kept standing here screaming, looking and longing for a hero on fire. And then I see that door open up. It's the, where my brother sleeps. It's the basement down there. He comes racing over to me. He grabs a throw rug, runs back over to me, swings back and forth three different times. And then he drops the rug. He gave up on me. And that's what I expected. That's my brother, Jimmy. He's 17. He's self-focused. That's what I expected. And then he changed. And then he realized life, life, is about something way bigger than just fighting for yourself. There's got to be a cause. There's got to be a reason. I remember Jim, 17, coming back into the fight, picking back up the rug, stepping back over to his little brother and swinging down a fourth time and then a fifth time and then a sixth time for two and a half minutes, burning himself, saving my life. He wrapped me in that rug. He carried me outside like a baby. We came out through this doorway. It was a chilly morning, just like today. Carries me out through here, brings me over to this piece of grass, throws me down, jumps on top of me, rolls around, gets up, and then he runs right back into the house to call 911. When he's inside, my two sisters come outside. The first one comes over and just holds me. She tells me everything's okay, everything's all right. The second sister runs back into the house for water to throw it into my face, risking her life time after time after time for me, for my life, being willing, if it came down to it, to lay down her life for someone else's. Real courage right there, real love. My friends, the date was January 17th. It was almost 30 years ago that this all went down in this room, in this house, in this yard, in this neighborhood. And it was a memory that for so many years I hated. I would have paid any psychologist, anybody else, any amount of money to just push this thing out of me. But now it's the kind of memory today in this house with my parents still here with you listening today that I'm grateful for because I realized that this was the turning point in my life. This was a gift that remained unopened for way too many years. And this is the joy that I get to share each day professionally through my work as a writer, through my work as a speaker, through my work online, and through my work today with you. My friends, we all have a story, and when we know it, we are liberated from it. So my challenge to you today is to be liberated from your story, be inspired by your story, and then finally, be bold enough to inspire others with that story. 
for this time. And until next time, this is John O'Leary, and this is your day to live on fire with your life.